Take your Bibles and let's go back to the book of beginnings. Let's go back to the book of Genesis chapter 37. Uh, Brother Mark was inquisitive this morning and wondering if I was done with the, the series on goats. And I told him no. Uh, God just kind of had it postponed. And that's what I had planned on preaching on tonight. But the Lord directed my heart otherwise. And, uh, but we're not through with it. We'll get back to it. And when it's done, it'll all be on one CD in MP3 format. And uh, Brother Mark is adding a lot of things to the, uh, uh, the library. And you really ought to go down and check out the library on Sunday evenings. There's uh, preaching CDs being added. There is DVDs being added. And he's even going back. He's digging through the tapes and, and uh, digging out some of the series that I've done in the past. And putting them, he's going to put them. Some of he's already put on CD, and some he's going to put on CD. And so, if you weren't here, one of the ones he's looking for is Bill's above Lord of the Flies. And Scott's not been able to find that yet. But I told him when you find it, it'll be lengthy. <laughs> Man. Um, but if you weren't here when we went through that, that'd be a good one for you to sit down and take the time to go through. And uh, he found this afternoon, I believe it was this afternoon, he found uh, the night that I dealt with the steeple before we took the steeple down. And so he's going to put that on CD. So if anybody's ever inquisitive in the future to you, why our church does no longer have a steeple or inquisitive about a steeple for any reason, you'll be able to get it and if you want a copy of it, it's easier to get a copy after it's already been put on CD than it is to take from take the CD and then make a copy. Brother Mark's already taken care of that. And uh, we certainly appreciate that. And uh, he's also, uh, in the future, going to be uh, Johnny's Baptist. He's got a lot of real-to-real, uh, -real, hundreds of hours of real-to-real stuff. And he's going to allow Brother Mark to take it and put it on the CD. And Brother Mark asked him, would it be all right to make a copy for us? And he said, yes. And so the library is going to continue to grow. Book-wise, it's going to continue to grow. Yeah, as I'm out and about and run across things that I already have, uh, I've been buying those to put down the library. Now, with that being said, I, I, I looked purposely before I came up tonight to see if anybody had checked out smoke screens yet. And nobody's checked it out. I was shocked. You won't find a greater concise exposition of Catholicism anywhere on the planet than that little book. And it's only 90 pages long. And a lot of those are pictures. You will see the picture of Billy Graham receiving his uh, honorary doctorate from a Catholic college in that book. Because he said that that Catholic college <clears throat> taught the same doctrines that he preaches. <laughs> so it would be worth your while, especially, you know, because we're in Billy Graham territory and you mention his name around here in a negative way, buddy. And you are, you know, you're the bad guy. But the evidence is down there in the library, and the evidence has been around for a long time. And uh, <clears throat> I didn't look, but I don't think that anybody has uh, also checked out the little book that I got when I got that one on Purified Seven Times. That's a tremendous little book, and it's also just a small book. It's not a lengthy book. Um, and then uh, I think which Bible is there? God wrote only one Bible. Uh, you say, well, preacher, we've learned all that. Yeah, but you've got to go back over it and going through it in book form, you'll pick up things that you didn't pick up as you were listening. Yeah. Amen. And, and so there's a lot of good stuff in there. Amen. So that is the promo for the library. You would think I'd make money if I would. <laughs> Amen. You ain't making nothing off of it. Amen. All right, in Genesis chapter 37 tonight, verse number 1. And Jacob dwelt in the land wherein his father was a stranger in the land of Canaan. These are the generations of Jacob. Joseph, being 17 years old, was feeding the flock with his brethren. 
And the lad was with the sons of Behal, and with the sons of Zilpah, his father's wives. And Joseph brought unto his father their evil report. What about that? Sounds like the wives of Joseph wasn't doing right. Wouldn't you say? Now I want you to notice that it says Joseph is 17 years old. Don't forget that. It's important. Verse 3. Now Israel loved Joseph more than all his children because he was the son of his old age and he made him a coat of many colors. And when his brethren saw that their father loved him more than all his brethren, they hated him and could not speak peaceably unto him. And Joseph dreamed a dream, and he told it his brethren, and they hated him yet the more. And he said unto them, Here I pray you this dream which I have dreamed. For behold, we, uh, we were binding sheaves in the field, and lo, my sheep arose and also stood upright. And behold, your sheaves stood round about and made obeisance to my sheep. And his brethren said to him, Shalt thou indeed reign over us? Now you all realize that he was the youngest son at this time. Benjamin's not been born. He's the youngest son. And they hated him yet the more for his dreams and for his words. And he dreamed yet another dream and told it his brethren and said, Behold, I have dreamed a dream more. And behold, the sun and the moon and the eleven stars made obeisance to me. And he told it to his father and to his brethren. And his father rebuked him and said unto him, What is this dream that thou hast dreamed? Shall I and thy mother and thy brethren indeed come to bow down ourselves to thee to the earth? Well, you and I have read the rest of the story. We know the answer. Yeah. Right? And his brethren envied him. But his father observed the same. But his father observed the same. You know, we read when we get over the New Testament about Mary that on several occasions that Mary observed the sayings of Christ. Verse 12. And his brethren went to feed their father's flock and shepherd. And Israel said unto Joseph, Do not thy brethren feed the flock in Shechem? Come, and I will send thee unto them. And he said to him, Here am I. And he said to him, Go, I pray thee, see whether it be well with thy brethren, and well with the flocks, and bring me word again. So he sent him out of the vale of Hebron, and he came to Shechem. And a certain man found him, and behold, he was wandering in the field, and the man asked him, saying, What seekest thou? And he said, I seek my brethren. Tell me, I pray thee, where they feed their flocks. Now before I finish reading right here, I do want to remind you, though I'm not going to preach on this tonight, that one of the greatest types of Jesus Christ in the Old Testament is Joseph. Yeah. There's not another character in the Old Testament that is like Jesus in more ways than Joseph himself. And right here is one of the occasions. And the verse that you would put with this in the New Testament is he came to seek and to save that which was lost because his brethren at this point are not where they're supposed to be. Yeah. And to Joseph they're lost. Amen. Amen. So as you read through these chapters for him, there's, uh, there's over 37 distinct things that makes Joseph a type of Jesus Christ. I just thought I'd throw that in for extra measure. The Bible said in verse 16, And he said, I seek my brethren, tell me, I pray thee, where they feed their flocks. And the man said, They are departed hence, for I heard them say, Let us go to Dothan. And Joseph went after his brethren and found them in Dothan. And when they saw him afar off, even before he came near unto them, they conspired against him to do what to them. Slain. Well, right there we go. There's another type of Jesus Christ. And then in verse 19, it said this. Come now, or in verse 19, and they said one to another, Behold, this dreamer cometh. Come now, therefore, and let us slay him and cast him into some pit, and we will say some evil beast have devoured him, and we shall see what will become of his dreams. And Reuben heard it. And he delivered him out of their hands and said, Let us not kill him. And Reuben said unto them, Shed no blood, but cast him into the, this pit that is in the wilderness, and lay no hand upon him that he might rid him out of their hands. 
to deliver him to his father again. Let's pray. Pray with me and you can be seated. <clears throat> Fathers, we bow in the divine presence again tonight. We certainly want to thank you, Father, for this day. And Father, we want to thank you for the many blessings of life. And Lord, we want to thank you that we have such a great and a grand opportunity to be back in your house. Uh, Father, we thank you as David said, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Uh, Father, we're thankful for goodness and mercy tonight. Uh, and Lord, we thank you that we can boldly come before the throne of grace and, and there we can uh, uh, obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Uh, Lord, we ask you tonight that as we come, uh, Lord, we are a needy people and Father, we need uh, uh, that bread of life, Father, uh, God, to be spread the force that we might be able to partake of it, and God, that it might strengthen our inner man. Lord, I trust tonight, dear God, that that's exactly what will take place in the preaching hour tonight. Lord, I pray, Father, that you'll bridle my tongue, and God, I, that you'll just lead it in the direction that you'd have it to go this evening. I, I pray, Father, that you'll illuminate my mind, and God, help me to say all that needs to be said tonight, and nothing more. Lord, I pray that you'll anoint our ears that we might hear, and God, that you give us a heart of understanding. I, I trust that as we gather tonight, uh, that Lord, each one of us truly have come with the right motive, uh, and that is that we might receive a message from God. Lord, I pray, Father, that you'd help us tonight. Uh, Lord, should there be any hindering spirit in our midst, God, certainly remove it far from this place tonight. Uh, and Lord, let the Spirit of God have liberty to speak to our hearts. Uh, God, lead us now. Uh, and Father, certainly, I think about the words of the psalm David, when he said, when my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. God, you know the condition that each of our hearts are in tonight. Lord, you know what we need as individuals, and God, you know what we need collectively as a body of believers. And Father, I pray that the Spirit of God, I would be able to accomplish the work in one and all tonight. Help us now, Father. I thank you. I praise you because I love you. As we ask these things in Jesus' name, thank you Lord. Amen and amen. Alright, go ahead and be seated right there tonight. Leave your Bibles open if you will, please. And uh, my text verse is uh, going to be verse number 19 tonight. In verse 19, the Bible said, and they said one to another, Behold, this dreamer cometh. Behold, this dreamer cometh. And uh, certainly, uh, uh, we've read the dreams. You've read them before. You've heard these passages of Scripture preached from. Uh, you've heard them taught over uh, uh, and in many different ways. Uh, and as I've already said, Joseph is one of the greatest types in the Old Testament of Jesus. Uh, but we're not going to examine that tonight in that light. Uh, we're going to look a little bit at the life of Joseph uh, and uh, try to gain some help. Uh, now, the first thing I want you to notice tonight by way of introduction uh, uh, is uh, uh, that Joseph's name uh, has two particular meanings. Uh, uh, first of all, Joseph Joseph means increase. And as we study on and see in Scripture, we recognize that God is going to increase the nation of Israel through Joseph. And then secondly, his name means addition. And we're going to see how that God added under the life of Joseph to the nation of Israel. And not meaning to get ahead of myself. But as we begin here in chapter number 37, one of the things that I pointed out, please don't forget this. In chapter 37, Joseph is 17 years old. And at 17 years old, he has these two dreams. We read about them. We know what they're dealing with. And getting ahead in the, in the history, we know that these dreams do come to pass in the life of Joseph, in the life of his brethren, and in the life of his father and his mother. But we see in verse number 18 uh, because of the envy and the hatred uh, uh, that his brothers had for him. Uh, uh, they wanted to slay him. They wanted to kill him. Uh, uh, they wanted to make sure uh, uh, that the dreams that he's had will never come to pass. Uh, and in that I want to say this. Uh, uh, you and I have got an adversary. Uh, in fact you and I have got many adversaries tonight uh, and 
And they certainly would not want your spiritual dreams to come to pass right. in your own life. And all of us should have dreams when it comes to the work of God and what God would use each of us to do. When it comes to our church, we should be dreamers like Joseph. Certainly when I came here a little over 19 years ago, God gave me some dreams about what He wanted this church to one day be. And I realize that all of them have not come to pass. But I also realize, friend, in reading this story about Joseph, that things do not happen overnight. And things don't happen on our timetable. Our yeah. dreams do not come to pass in the frame of time that we want to put them in. We are an instant society tonight. We like microwave meals. Yeah. We like drive throughs and we like the fact, and I know all of you have noticed this, uh, uh, there can be a line all the way around uh, on those fast food stores, uh, and there can be a smaller line on the inside, uh, and if you'll get in the fast, if you'll get in the drive through uh, uh, nine times out of ten, uh, uh, you will get your food quicker uh, than if you go stand in line, uh, and that is a convenience thing. Uh, uh, we like convenience. We like instant things. Uh, we like instant grits. Oh, but Mike, he doesn't like grits at all. Uh, we like instant oatmeal. Uh, amen. Uh, I mean, look, we want it done right now. Uh, a few months ago, Ballpark came out uh, uh, with these Angus grilled burgers uh, uh, that you put in the microwave. Uh, uh, if you've got a microwave like ours, uh, you put it in there for a minute and 20 seconds uh, and man, the grease is running out all over the plate and it's ready to go on the bun uh, and to stop up your arteries. Amen. <laughs> we like now. We want it now. We don't want it tomorrow. We don't want it next year. We want it right now. Yeah. That's not the way God works. Amen. And I hope by the time that we get through this tonight that you'll understand uh, uh, that God has a purpose in everything that He does. Uh, and one of the things that He wants you and I, as Brother uh, uh, Reinhardt preached to us about patience back in Jubilee, uh, you and I have got to learn what Joseph learned uh, in his life. Uh, and even though God gives you the dreams, uh, you've got to have patience uh, and you've got to wait on God. Uh, and God He's going to do everything in His time, even not ours. Amen. Amen. Now, there's three things that I want you to get as we go through this concerning Joseph. Number one is he was faithful. Number two is he was focused. And number three, he was favored. He was faithful, he was focused, and he was favored. And so as we begin now, we look and we know that, that the brethren are upset. And, and let me say this, uh, uh, Satan is not your only adversary tonight. Yeah. But you have already found and I found in my own life uh, uh, that when you are a dreamer uh, and, and when you want to do the will of God in your life uh, and when you commit yourself, not just surrender, uh, but when you truly commit your life to the Lord Jesus Christ and living for Him, uh, that many of your adversaries are going to be the brethren themselves. And much of the time it's going to be cause of envy. And they're going to envy you because the first place that you find that Joseph found favor is he found favor with his father Jacob. Amen. And he was faithful to his father. And he was focused concerning the will of his father. And that's the whole context here in the first part of this chapter. As we find that he's doing the will of his father Jacob. Jacob uh, in going down to see about his older brethren uh, and seeing about the sheep and being able to bring back the report uh, of how they're faring uh, uh, out there in the field. Amen. Amen. But his brethren envies him and his brethren hates him uh, because of that favor that their father shows on him. And can I tell you tonight, friend, that uh, any time that your Father in heaven favors you, uh, it's going to stir the devil up. Yeah. And any time your Father in heaven favors you, uh, it's going to stir up brethren. Uh, I'm talking about saved folks now uh, uh, that are not living for God uh, and they're living for themselves uh, and they're spinning their wheels and they're not getting anywhere uh, and God's not blessing them. Uh, it'll stir them up and they'll be 
become your adversaries. Amen. Amen. But that's not the message. I'm going to give you a couple of occasions here. Well, more than a couple. A couple is two. But in the text now, as we begin reading, the Bible said in verse number 20, Come now, therefore, and let us slay him, and cast him into some pit. And we will say, Some evil beast hath devoured him. And we shall see what he will become of his dreams. And Reuben hurried, and he had delivered him out of their hands, and said, Let us not kill him. And Reuben said unto them, Shed no blood, but cast him in unto this pit that in, in, in this wilderness, and lay no hand upon him, and that he might rid him out of their hands to deliver him uh, in his father again. And it came to pass when Joseph was come unto his brethren uh, that they stripped Joseph out of his coat, uh, his coat of many colors uh, that was on him, uh, and they took him and cast him into a pit. Uh, and the pit was empty. Uh, there was no water in it. Uh, and they sat down to eat bread, uh, and they lifted up their eyes and looked. Uh, and behold, a company of Ishmaelites came from Gilead uh, with their camels bearing spicery and balm and were going to carry it down to Egypt. And Judah said unto his brethren, What profit is it if we slay our brother and conceal his blood? Come and let us sell him to the Ishmaelites and let not our hand be upon him, for he is our brother and our flesh, and his brethren were content. And so the first place we find here in chapter number 37 that we find Joseph is we find him in the pit. And I want I want you to keep in mind now in the pit these three things in the pit he was faithful in the pit he was focused in the pit he found favor he found favor of Reuben only one of his eleven brothers had no desire to put him to death amen and what a blessing that is and so that's why he's in the pit that's why they haven't slow slew him it's because he found favor uh, with one of the brethren. Uh, but in this pit, uh, look, he wasn't, he, he had no idea. Uh, uh, Brother Douglas, he'd make that trip down to Shechem, uh, and then as the brothers weren't there, the sheep weren't there, uh, and he was told by a stranger that they were down in Dothan, uh, and he made that trip, friend. Uh, he had no idea uh, of the animosity that was in the hearts of his brothers. Uh, he had no idea of how much they hated and envied him. Uh, he, they had no idea uh, as he was coming across Across the horizon, as they saw him afar off, they began to conspire in their hearts and conspire one with another how that they might kill him and what lie that they might tell of their father Jacob. He had no idea that any of these things were going on. But listen, friend, then he gets put down in the pit. The Bible said it was empty, there was no water. I mean, listen, one of the most terrible places that he could have possibly been out there in the wilderness is in the bottom of that pit. Amen. He had a dream and that dream was that one day his brothers were going to bow in obeisance to him. Now they're up around the fire eating bread and he's down in the pit. Man, you don't get any lower in life than being down in the pit. He had that dream that the day would come when his father and his mother would bow in obeisance to him and now he's down in the pit. His father has no idea what's going on. But let me tell you this, friend. Whenever the Lord allows you to be put in that pit, he knows exactly what's going on. Yeah. And he knows exactly where you are. And he knows exactly why you're there. Amen. God never makes any mistakes. Yeah. Boy, he was in a dry and a thirsty land. And the conspiracy was still going on. But I want you to know this. He was faithful. Not one complaint is uttered from the depths of that pit. Not one time do you find in the Word of God did he murmur and complain that his brethren had cast him down. Oh, friend, listen. He could hear the conversation. There's no doubt. He knew what was on their mind. But he was faithful in that pit. He didn't murmur. He didn't complain. He didn't question. Amen. He was faithful in that pit. He knew the dreams that God had allowed him to have. And he knew that that pit was not going to be his final resting 
place. Why? Because he was focused. Amen. He realized how that God is a God that's true. And God who cannot lie. And God would have never wasted his time. And God would have never wasted Joseph's time to allow him to have those dreams, my friend, and show him what was going to come to pass one day in his life if he'd just be faithful to God. Amen. And so even down there in the pit, while they're conspiring what they're going to do, friend, he's already focused. He doesn't know exactly how. God didn't tell him how. God didn't tell him all of the ins and the outs, friend. God didn't give him a time frame. He didn't put him on a timeline. He didn't lay it out day by day, week by week, month by month. He didn't tell Joseph when he had the dreams how long it would be before they came to pass. But in every avenue of Joseph, his life, we find that he remained faithful, he remained focused, and that he found favor with God. Amen. Amen. Now, listen, pits can be terrible places. You here tonight, friend, listen, you may be in a pit. What do I need to do, preacher? You need to stay faithful. What do I need to do? You need to stay focused. Yeah. And you need to recognize, listen, I, the reason why God has placed it in your heart to have those dreams about what He wants to do with your life uh, is because He has uh, uh, and, and, and the intention uh, of allowing that to become true uh, if you'll remain what you're supposed to be. Amen. Amen. Now I want to say this because I'm tying this in with the message as well. Look, I know what it is to be in the pit. And I know tonight, friend, that this and all of the dreams that God has given me about this church and being pastor of this church, I, I haven't seen all of those fulfilled. But that doesn't mean that God has changed His mind. I'm here to tell you tonight, God has not changed His mind. Amen. It hasn't happened in my time frame. And we've gone through some things that I would have never chose for any of us to go through. I, but God doesn't make mistakes. And God intends when we come out of the pit to be a far greater individual than we were before we went into the pit. Amen. Amen. I tell you, the pit can be a lonely place. There wasn't anybody else down there in that pit with Joseph. There wasn't, the Bible didn't say anything about there being any serpents. There wasn't any uh, uh, scorpions. Uh, and there wasn't even any water for him to drink, friend. I, I'm telling you, getting put down in the pit can be a very lonely place. Uh, and what God allows to put you in that pit many times are the brethren in him. Yeah. The brethren would like to squish your dreams. Yeah. Amen. Hello? Amen. Amen. What I'm trying to tell you tonight is, uh, behold, this dreamer cometh. I, I don't want you to lose your dreams tonight. I, I want you to stay focused on God. I, I want our church to stay focused on God. I, I want you to stay focused on God. I, listen, Sunday school teachers, I, you need to be faithful and you need to be focused tonight. I, and you need to have a dream about the class I, that God has had me appoint you over. I, you need to have a dream about what that class is going to become. I, and what you're going to be able to do with that class. And you need to understand, I feel that as you teach students, you're teaching them how to become teachers themselves one day. Amen. Amen. You need to have some dreams and you need to stay focused on that. Amen. And not lose that dream. Just because you end up in a pit. Hello? Amen. Amen. Next of all, look with me in Genesis chapter 39. We know the story. He gets sold and makes that trip on the camel train down to Egypt. And in chapter 39, verse number 1, And Joseph was brought down to Egypt, and Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh, captain of the guard, an Egyptian, bought him of the hands of the Ishmaelites, which had bought him down, brought him down thither. And the Lord was with Joseph. Look at that. God still showing Joseph favor. Yeah. But now, friend, listen, I, he's out of the pit, yes, but guess what his next stop is? His next stop is Potiphar's house. I, and, friend, listen, I, in Potiphar's house, he's a slave. But he's going to become a special slave because God still showing favor on him. <laughs> Amen. I, I mean, listen, I, I look at what it goes on to say. And the Lord was with 
Joseph, and he was a prosperous man. Look at that. A slave now. No man minds you. A 17 year old boy sold into the hands of the Egyptians or the Ishmaelites and then put on this auction block in Egypt and Potiphar buys him and he's a prosperous man because he still has favor with God. Amen. Amen. Now you'd have to know that Joseph would wonder on occasion, Lord, how are you going to bring these dreams to pass? You'd have to wonder while he was back there in the pit and his brothers was talking about his demise and getting rid of him. I, I was sending him off to Egypt, man. We'll get him as far away from us as we possibly can. And down there he'll become a slave and that's all that he'll ever be. And we'll never hear from him again. You'd have to know that in his mind he is wondering, God, how are you going to allow the dreams that you've given me to come true? I'm, I'm faithful. I'm focused. I know that I've found faith. I know it's going to come to pass, but I certainly don't know how you're going to do it when down here in the pit. Yeah. Yeah. And then even more so, friend, when he gets down into Egypt and now he becomes a slave in Potiphar's house. Lord, he's faithful. I don't know how you're going to do it, God. But I know, I know one day those brothers that sold me into the hands of them Israelites, I know one day they're going to battle me since to me they're young and rubber. I don't know how you're going to accomplish it, Lord. I'm in Egypt, they're Canaan. But I believe you. I believe you're going to do it. Yeah. He stayed focused. He stayed focused. He never got his eyes off of seeing the fulfillment of that dream take place. The Bible continues on in verse number 2 and says that he was in the house of his master, the Egyptian, and his master saw that the Lord was with him. What about that? Here's an Egyptian that's worshiping all of those different gods. That later on in the book of Exodus, we're going to find Moses come down in Pharaoh's house, and every one of those plagues is going to be against the gods that these Egyptians are worshiping, friend, and following after. But here, back here in Jacob's day, Back here in Joseph's day. Back here on this day. Here we have an Egyptian that is the captain of the guard at the Pharaoh. And he sees how that, 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 that he's prospered. How that he's, or Joseph is prospered because he's found favor with God in him. Amen. Isn't that something? His master saw that the Lord was with him and the Lord made all that he did to prosper in his hand. And Joseph found grace in his sight, and he served him. Look at that. One of the ways that he was faithful to God, being a slave, was he served faithfully the master that he was put under. Amen. He was focused, Brother Jim, in the knowing, even though that Paul has not come along yet and said, whether therefore you eat or drink or whatsoever you do, do all to the glory of God. That's exactly what Joseph is doing in the house of Potiphar. He recognizes the fact that he's a slave. He recognizes it's the will of God that's put him there so. And he recognizes who his master is. And he serves his master as unto the Lord. Amen. Amen. God blesses him for it. Why? Well, Peter hadn't wrote yet. He's not alive yet. But Peter would come along and write something that Joseph is practicing back here in Genesis. Humble yourself therefore under the mighty hand of God. Amen. Yeah. And in the master-slave situation, friend, the mighty hand of God is the master, Potiphar. And Joseph is faithfully humbling himself under that mighty hand. Amen. Look, that's why you shouldn't bicker and complain about your boss. Amen. He is Amen. that authority that God's placed over you. He or she might be the most evil, wicked, worthless, ruthless individual that's on the face of the earth, but God's placed you under them. And as far as you're concerned, at this time in your life, they ought to be the greatest boss on the planet. Amen. Some of y'all looking at me real funny. Right. <laughs> but if you don't, you're not humbling yourself, therefore, under the mighty hand of God. And you're not doing all to the glory of God. Look at what it goes on to say. Joseph found 
God grace in his sight and he served him and he made him overseer over his house and all that he had he put into his hand. What did he do? Now listen, yes, Joseph is still a slave, but Potiphar makes him the steward of his house and not only his house, but he makes him the steward over everything that he owned. Do you know what you are tonight in this dispensation of the church? You are a steward of God. And it's required of stewards that a man must first be found faithful. Potiphar found Joseph faithful. And he found him prosperous because he found favor with God. And because he found favor with God and he was focused on what he was doing, he found favor as well with Potiphar. Amen. You want to find favor with your boss? Be faithful. You want to find favor with your boss? Be focused. You want to find favor with your boss? Be found favorable to God. He'll recognize that God's hand on you. Amen. We were doing good, but we got off on that aspect of it. Amen. The Bible said in verse 5, And it came to pass from the time that he had made him overseer in his house and over all that he had, that the Lord blessed the Egyptian's house for who? For Joseph's sake. Amen. You know why God blessed America for so many years? Uh, uh, because of His children. Amen. Uh, you know why God has blessed so many uh, uh, workplaces down through the years of uh, uh, ruthless individuals that own those places? Uh, it wasn't because the God of this world was blessing that institution. Uh, it was because for Joseph's sake uh, uh, God blessed. Amen. 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 Gotta keep that in mind. Yeah. Amen. 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 Look, if you don't want your hours cut, ask God to, first of all, be faithful and focused. Find favor with God, and then I ask God to bless where you're working. Amen. Amen. Or I don't need my hours cut. you got to bless it, man. Let the money roll in. Amen. Hello? Amen. Amen. Okay, some of y'all been praying God kill your boss. What's wrong with you? <laughs> Hello? Man, some of the places y'all are working, if God kills the boss, struck him dead today, they close the doors tomorrow because nobody wants the headache in the family, amen? And you wouldn't hang and get a pink slip. You just walk in and somebody says, I'm sorry, but the doors are forever closed. Yeah. Hello? Amen. Amen. Better think about that when you pray about your boss next time. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Notice what it goes on to say. That the Lord blessed the Egyptian's house for Joseph's sake. And the blessing of the Lord was upon all that he had in the house and in the field. I mean, man, God's blessing everything. Part of our own. God is touching it because of Joseph. But I want you to notice, friend, that in part of his house, Joseph is faithful. He's focused. He's found favor. He's still. And he's just, he's being just as faithful to this Egyptian master and thinking about, Lord, I don't know how, I don't know when, but I know you gave me this dream. I know you're going to fulfill it one day. I don't know, Lord, if you're going to take me back to the land of Cain or if you're going to bring my brethren down to the land of Egypt. I, I don't know exactly how you're going to accomplish it. I, I don't know if you're taking me back to my father's house I, or if you're bringing my father and taking me down to me. But God, I know. I, I'm focused. I know. I, I know that if I'll be faithful, one day you're going to do exactly what you laid on my heart that you're going to do. Amen. Now, was this the path that Joseph would have chose for himself to see the dreams fulfilled? Probably not. Is this the time frame that Joseph would have chose? Well, probably not. But you and I have got to keep that in mind as well as we work for the Lord. And as Brother Mark has been preaching to us about rebuilding, friend, you and I have got to stay focused and you and I have got to stay faithful. And you and I have got to know that the dream is not gone. The dream is not dissipated. I, I fear what God put in your pastor's heart years ago is still there. And I'm still focused and I'm still faithful. And God's still showing me favor. Man, I told Mom and Dad, I said, man, I've got a good life. We were talking a little bit about my brother. Man, he's miserable. He ain't got no life. Man. 
My brother ain't got no life, and he ain't never going to have any life apart from Jesus. Amen. Man, I've got life. Amen. I've got an exciting life. There's some things about my life I would have never chose and, and things about people that I pastored that I would have never chose for them. I, I've been in pits. You've been in pits. Others have been in pits. I, I, we've been through Potiphar's house time and time again. I, maybe we would not have chose those things for our life, but God knows exactly what He's doing. I, and He's prepared us for the time I, that He finally decides to allow those dreams to be fulfilled. Amen. 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 Are you still dreaming? Amen. Are you still a dreamer? Those of you that are Sunday school teachers tonight, man, look, you ought to be like Joseph right here in Potiphar's house. Those of you fellows, Brother Mark and Brother Doug and Brother Scott, the preachers in the church, look, you're in Potiphar's house. No, you're not the top dog. But you're part of the dream. Amen. And you should be focused and faithful and have a desire to see the dreams fulfilled. God put this church on this hill years ago for a reason. Yeah. And so far, look, the devil's not been happy about it. He ain't never going to be happy about it unless the doors one day eventually are closed. He's not succeeded in doing that. Amen. But God put it in my heart 19 and a half years ago about what God wants to do with this church before we get out of here. And I haven't lost that dream. Amen. I hope you haven't. Amen. Amen. Man, we've seen part of it fulfilled. Mitch and these guys up here playing, man. man. Hey, look, I'm telling you. But that's, that's just a small portion of it. We got some folks that's going to start working with young people. And, you know, one of my dreams has always been to have a youth choir. We haven't had it yet. But I still believe one day we're going to have one of the greatest youth choirs in Buncombe County. Amen. Say, so how long is it going to take, preacher? I don't know. We ain't there yet. But we're going to be. Can't you see it? Amen. 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 Man, the ministries in this church and out of this church, uh, look, God has laid things on my heart. We don't need to just be supporting a George McDowell uh, traveling across the country. Uh, uh, friend, we need to be supporting somebody right here out of our church doing exactly what Brother George is doing uh, and doing it right here in Western North Carolina. Amen. Amen. The dream is still there. What do we need to do? Well, while we're in Potiphar's house, we just need to be faithful. We need to stay focused because God still shared, showed His favor on us. Oh, yeah, He's a slave. Look how God's blessing you. Man, don't you know that all of a sudden that Joseph has become the envy of every steward of every man of stature in Egypt? And man, don't you know that the other captains of the guard and those in high standings of Pharaoh, they're looking over here and seeing how God's blessing Potiphar's house and walking, hey Potiphar, man, what is going on? Man, our fields are drying up and look at yours. The rain's cut off of ass and it's raining on yours. You're bringing in the harvest. I mean, what is going on? Well, it's just what's going on is a man named Joseph. Yeah. And they look at Joseph, and he's still, look, man, he ain't 20 years old yet. What do you mean? Well, he's just a young punk. He's a lad. Oh, well, yeah, but he's found favor with God. Now they know about for speaking out of his head because they don't know God and they don't worship God. But now Potiphar's recognizing, I, man, the reason why I, I'm getting more wealthy every day in the harvest is are coming in I, is because of that Hebrew amen. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know the rest of the story about Potiphar's wife. But Joseph doesn't sin. Isn't that something? There is no temptation taking you but such as is common to man, but God is what? 
What about that? Hey, Amen. fellas, if the devil ever tries to use a woman to tempt you in the flesh, you just remember that Joseph, he left Potiphar's wife standing. Yeah. She wasn't worth becoming unfaithful. Amen. She wasn't worth taking his eyes off of God. She wasn't worth what God had in store in the fulfillment of the dreams that he had given this young man. And there's not a woman in earth that's worth it. Right. Amen. So we know the rest, but if you'll jump down now to verse number 20, we're going to find the same thing. Joseph, behold, this dreamer cometh. He was faithful in the pit. He was focused in the pit. He found favor in the pit. He was faithful in Potiphar's house. He was focused in Potiphar's house. Look, man, he wanted God to bless Potiphar. Yeah. Why? Because while God was blessing Potiphar's house, he was blessing Joseph. Don't you know that? But then we find in verse 20, And Joseph's master took him and put him into the prison, a place where the king's prisoners were bound, and he was there in the prison. But the Lord was with Joseph. There he is. He still finds favor. Now he's in prison. Out of the pit through Potiphar's house. We don't know how long he was in Potiphar's house. But now here he is in prison. Yeah. God, I don't know how you're going to do it. They don't understand how he ended up here. But I know. I know one day. I know one day, God. You promised me in those dreams. I'm going to stay focused. I don't know how Bob's going to let me stay here. I don't know if I'm ever going to get out of here. I don't know if it's here, Lord, that you're going to bring my brethren I, and here in prison you're going to have them bound obeisance to me. But I know that day's coming when you're going to fulfill the dream. What was he doing? He's just staying focused. Yeah. Man, if you stay focused in prison, you stay focused anywhere. If you stay faithful to God in prison, you can stay faithful to God anywhere. Joseph proved the point that prison walls does not a prison make. Amen. It wasn't like Joseph was in prison. He was faithful. He found favor with God. He was staying focused. He didn't understand everything at the time in his life. But he realized he was still in the will of God. And freedom, that's what makes the difference tonight. If you're in the pit, if you're in the Potiphar's house, or if you're in prison tonight, if you're in the will of God and you're focused on the dreams God gave you, everything will yeah. be Bible said in verse 21, But the Lord was with Joseph and showed him mercy and gave him favor in the sight of the keeper of the prison. Oh, my soul. What about that? Isn't that something? What a testimony. You and I are reading this testimony tonight and looking back. And, man, it didn't make any difference what God allowed the devil to throw at this young man. He found favor anyway. Why? He was faithful. You stay faithful to God, God will stay faithful to you. Amen. You stay faithful to God, and God will show you favor. David said, Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. Amen. In the pit, Joseph delighted himself in the Lord. In Potiphar's house, Joseph delighted himself in the Lord. Now in the prison house, Joseph is delighting himself in the Lord and just waiting and biding his time knowing that God is going to do exactly what God told him to do. Yeah. Man, he's focused. Now, just as God blessed in Potiphar's house, God wants to see, or Joseph wants to see God bless in the prison house. Isn't that something? Look, I've met some, some prisoners when I used to help Wayside Prison Ministries. Man, I, I've met some prisoners that were like Joseph, and then I've met some others, man, that were just cold and indifferent and mad at God, angry at the world. But you don't have to be behind prison bars tonight, church, to be in prison. 
Yeah. If you're here and you're saved tonight, man, and you're out of the will of God, and you're not doing what God wants you to do, you feel like you're in prison. Amen. You've lost focus and you're not faithful. That's not what God wants you to do tonight. Amen. And I'm telling you, here's a young man that his brethren envied him and hated him and they think they've done away with him. And man, we're never going to see Joseph again. They've lied to Jacob and they mourned for, for all of those days. And Jacob is still, we're going to find Jacob years later, is still mourning the loss of Joseph. And you know how that God gives him Benjamin. And man, I'm telling you, he doesn't want Benjamin out of his sight because of what happened to Joseph. We know all of the story. We know all of the history for him. But here's a young man that's not bitter at anybody over the circumstances that he is surrounded. With. Yeah. A lot of good Baptists has gone to the pit just to get angry at God. Amen. A lot of good Baptists have gone to Potiphar's house just to get angry at God. A lot of good Baptists have ended up in some kind of prison in their life just to get angry at God. This young man's not angry. He's not upset. He's not fussing. He's not cussing. He's not murmuring. He's not complaining. Why? He's focused. Not one time do we read in all of these chapters that Joseph says, Lord, I just can't believe you put me in this place when you made such a promise to me in that dream. that he was in there with to be content Joseph was practicing it. Amen. He was content Amen. because he was faithful. He was content because he was focused. And he was content because he found favor with God. Amen. Amen. Well, you know the rest of the story. You know about the butler and the baker. But look at, before we get there, the Bible said in verse 22, and the keeper of the prison committed to Joseph's hand all the prisoners that were in the prison. What about that? Here's this little Hebrew boy. That's all he is. He's a big brony guy. He's just a little Hebrew teenager. Or maybe in his early 20s by now, at the most. And all these prisoners, all these prisoners, hey, look, man, it ain't just the butler and the baker that's in the prison house. You've got thieves and thugs. You've got murderers and perverts in there. Yeah. But the prison keeper sees how that God shows favor to Joseph. Man, he knew, look, no doubt he'd seen how God had blessed Potiphar's house while Joseph was there at Stuart. And now what does he do? He makes him the keeper of the prison. He makes him the steward of the prison. And that's something. Amen. Not worried about, man, look, he's a long way from home. He's down here amongst strangers. He's mm -hmm. down here amongst the enemy. Why, well, if I give him the keys to the cells and keys to the door, next thing I know, man, he's going to be gone. He's going to escape the place. No, he ain't going to escape the place. Escape hasn't even crossed the mind of Joseph. Yeah. Why? Because he knows he's supposed to be there. He may not understand it all, but he knows that he's supposed to be there. God is teaching him some things. God was teaching him in the pit. God was teaching him in Potiphar's house. Amen. I, I mean, man, as a young lad made the steward, made the steward in a wealthy man's house. And now the prison. And by the time God gets done with him and gets him out of prison, he's going to be able to lead a nation. Yeah. He's going to be able to lead the poorest of the poor, and he's going to be able to lead the richest of the rich. Boy, this is a Cinderella story. Did y'all realize that? Because when he leaves, finally leaves the prison, the next place you find him, 
is the Pharaoh's palace. There's a boy that goes from the pit to the palace because God gave him dreams. Behold, this dreamer cometh. Behold, this dreamer cometh. Behold, this dreamer cometh. Look over in Genesis chapter 41. Genesis chapter 41. Genesis chapter 41, you know the story. Pharaoh's had his, he, he's now had his dreams and, and none of the uh, magicians or anybody can interpret his dreams. And so uh, all of a sudden, Joseph is remembered after two long years. He's brought to the palace. And in verse 37, for time's sake, the Bible said this, And the thing was good in the eyes of Pharaoh. What thing? Joseph interpreted the dreams. And he told him about the seven years of famine and the seven years of plenty. The seven years of plenty and then the seven years of famine. And he said, And the thing was good in the eyes of Pharaoh and in the eyes of all his servants. And Pharaoh said unto his servants, Can we find such a one as this is, a man in whom the Spirit of God is? There wasn't another one in Egypt. Isn't that something? There wasn't another one in Egypt. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, For as much as God has showed thee all this, there is none to discreet. There is none so discreet and wise as thou art. Thou shalt be over my house. Uh oh, now not only has he found favor with God again, but now he's found favor with Pharaoh. Yeah. Amen. Thou shalt be over my house, and according unto thy word shall all my people be ruled. According unto whose word? Joseph's word. Boy, this is a long way from the pit. Yeah. Isn't it? But he was faithful and he was focused and he found favor. This is a long way from Potiphar's house. Potiphar was a great man, but he wasn't Pharaoh. Amen. It's a long way from prison. Yeah. And that's something. Be brought directly out of prison into the palace. Thou shalt be over my house, and according unto thy word shall all my people be ruled. Only in the throne will I be greater than thou. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, See, I have set thee over all the land of Egypt. But you know, even right now, Joseph has got to be thinking, Lord, I don't know how you're going to do it, but I know you're going to do it. We're not in Canaan. My father and my brethren are in Canaan. You promised Abraham Canaan. I don't know how you're going to do it, but you told me, Lord, in that dream, the day is going to come. You're going to set me in a position. And my brothers are going to bow in obeisance to me, and my father and my mother are going to bow in obeisance to me. I am going to be the authoritative figure. He's still focused. He's not absolutely certain how God's going to do it or where God's going to do it, but he knows God's going to do it. Yeah. Can I tell you, it's not the where and the why and the how that you have to worry about. You just need to be focused on the fact that God's going to do it. Amen. And you just got to be faithful until God does it. Amen. Amen. Hello? Amen. Is that hard? Not really. Amen. Hello? Amen. What are you trying to say, preacher? I'm trying to say there's no place in Scripture to lose hope. Yeah. I'm trying to tell you tonight that as a child of God that there's no reason for you to lose hope. Amen. You might be in the pit and the devil might be trying to convince you that there's no reason to go on, but I'm here to tell you tonight you don't lose hope in the pit. Amen. Neither do you in the prison. Amen. Verse 42 said, And Pharaoh took off his ring from his hand and put it upon Joseph's hand and arraigned him in vestures of fine linen and put a gold chain about his neck. And he made him to ride in the second chariot which he had, and they cried before him, Bow the knee. And he made him ruler over all the land of Egypt. Now jump down to verse 46. And Joseph was 30 years old when he stood before Pharaoh, king of Egypt. Well, this didn't happen overnight. 
Didn't happen overnight. But look, even though God is working to get him to the place where the dream is going to be fulfilled, he's not there yet. The sole seat of authority is not what the dream was about. The dream was about the time when his brothers would come and bow at his feet. And the dream was about when his father Jacob and his mother would be brought and bow before his feet. Even though he'd been raised to such a position of authority, his brothers are not there. And neither is his father. The dream is not fully fulfilled yet, but God's working to let it in. Amen. Amen. How long has it took? Well, he's 30 years old. He had to dream when he was 17. Somebody do the math. 13. 13 years have passed so far? Wow. 13 years have passed so far. But he's not there yet. Come on, y'all still with me? Amen. 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 Now, you know, the brethren would say that if things don't happen in 18 months, the 24 months, that you ought to pack your bags and leave. Yeah. That's what most pastors do. You do right. know that they just stay for 18 to 24 months and then they pack their bags and they leave. Amen. And then they preach about grasshopper Christians. That's pretty pathetic, isn't it? Amen. They preach about one of the reasons why folks become grasshopper Christians is because as soon as the devil turns the heat up, they don't want to hang around, man. So they jump out of the frying pan and go find them a nicer place. Well, that's what preachers do too. You know, first 12 months is honeymoon. Then you get to know the people after 12 months. Then you can really get down and start preaching <laughs> to where they live at. Amen. And so, boy, you can you go through a lot of hell from 12 to 18 months. And then by 24, they're ready to throw their hands up in there and quit. That ain't the way God designed this thing, brother. Yeah. Right. Amen. Now look, man, things are looking up for Joseph. He's second in command. He's got the king's signet ring. The king's not wearing it now. He's giving it to Joseph. Man, Pharaoh, he's just, he, he's on easy street, man. He's, he's seen how God has blessed Joseph in Potiphar's house. He's seen how God blessed Joseph in the prison house. And now Pharaoh just said, man, I'm just going to let the God of Joseph, I'm going to let Joseph run this thing. I'm going on vacation. Yeah. It's yours, Joseph. And so every decree that's got to be sealed comes across the desk of Joseph from that point on. Takes that signet ring and that hot wax, and bam. And God's blessing Egypt. You know why he's blessing Egypt? Because of Joseph. But he's let Pharaoh have a dream. You're going to have seven plenteous years. There's going to be years, harvest years, like Egypt has never seen. And then I'm going to send a famine for seven years. Seven lean years. I believe you picked the right guy, don't you? Amen. Amen. And so Joseph, man, he's a good steward. And over those seven years of plenty, buddy, he stores it up and stores it up and stores it up and he gets ready for those seven years of famine. Okay, so we're jumping ahead in the storm. Now jump over, if you will, please, a little bit further. And you know how the famine comes. Look, you got to get past seven plenteous years. Years are still being added and the dream has not yet been fulfilled. And so somewhere out in those famine years, Jacob recognizes the fact that there's corn in Egypt. None left in Canaan. It could have been Eight years after Joseph was placed on the throne there, or it could have been nine years, or it could have been ten years.
But it's been long enough now to where the land of Canaan is suffering. And Jacob knows that he has to do something to take care of his family. So he gathers those brothers up and he sends them down to Egypt to buy corn. Y'all know the story. Amen. And you know how that they don't recognize Joseph on that first trip. And you know how inquisitive that Joseph is and he wants to know is their father still alive. And how he has to remove himself from their presence and go off into the other room and cry. And then the next trip, and then the trip when Benjamin is bought, brought down. <coughs> but the dream is still not fulfilled. Y'all realize that? The dream is still not fulfilled. So when you jump over into chapter number 46, Well, look at verse chapter 45, verse 25. And they went up out of Egypt and came into the land of Canaan unto Jacob their father and told him, saying, Joseph is yet alive. And he is governor over all the land of Egypt. And Jacob's heart failed, for he believed him not. And they told him all the words of Joseph which he had said unto the young. And when he saw the wagons which Joseph had sent to carry him, the spirit of Jacob, their father, to die. Joseph sent enough wagons out of Egypt to be able to bring not only his father, but all of his family back down into the land of Egypt to care for them. And Israel said, It is enough. Joseph, my son, is yet alive. I will go and see him before I die. And Israel took his journey with all that he had and came to Beersheba and offered sacrifices unto the God of his father Isaac. And God spake unto Israel in the visions of the night and said, Jacob, Jacob, and he said, Here am I. And he said, I am God, the God of thy father. Fear not to go down into Egypt. You hear? Now Jacob's having a dream. Fear not to go down into Egypt, for I will there make of thee a great nation. I will go down with thee into Egypt and I will also surely bring thee up again. And Joseph shall put his hand upon thine eyes. And Jacob rose up from Beersheba and the sons of Israel carried Jacob their father and their little ones and their wives and the wagons which Pharaoh had sent to carry him. And they took their cattle and their goods which they had gotten in the land of Canaan and came into Egypt. Jacob and all his seed with him his sons and his sons' sons with him, his daughters and his sons' daughters, and all his seed brought him with him into Egypt. Man, that took a lot of wagons. Didn't it? Yeah. But here's what I want you to see tonight. Back in Genesis chapter 37, if you have the date in the top of your Bible, it was B.C. 1729. That's when Joseph was 17 years old. That's when he was put in pit by his envious brothers. But now when you get over to Genesis chapter 46, if you look at the top of the page, you'll find that it's B.C. 1706. 23 years have passed. That's according to their time. But that time really couldn't be right. It's really more than 23 years. So what are you saying, preacher? I'm saying this. When God gives a man a dream, he doesn't let that dream be fulfilled overnight. But what he expects out of that man is that that man remain faithful, that he remain focused, and he is found to have faith with God.
So here's what I tell you tonight. As the congregation of Bingham Heights Baptist Church. If you can see that I've lost those three things in my life, then you've got a legitimate reason to give up on me. And you've got a legitimate reason to give up on this church. And you've got a legitimate reason to find you somewhere else to go. But if you can't find that I've lost those three things, then you should still be just as focused and just as faithful in finding favor with God that we will remain patient until God says it's time to fulfill the dream. Amen. Nancy, come again. Man, what a trip. What a trip Joseph had been on from the pit to the palace. And what a trip from Canaan for Jacob and all of Joseph's family to come down to the land of Egypt. Let's stand at feet tonight. Amen. It was in the midst of that family that God finally, ultimately, fulfilled the dreams that He gave to Joseph. It was a time when the brethren would have least expected it because the brethren had all given up. Don't give up tonight, church. Don't give up. 